Coach uh, Rich Rodriguez here joining us. And, uh, Coach, first of all, I mean, how's, how's Jacksonville treating you so far? You, you've had a chance to kind of get in, get acclimated with, with the city. How, how's Jacksonville so far? Oh, I love it here. You know, we've, we're very fortunate that we were able to find a house close to campus. You know, the people in the community have been terrific. Uh, it's an easy place to get settled in, no traffic, the restaurants, and there's no lines. And, and so it's easy to get settled. And uh, I really like the team that we have, the guys that are working hard. Now, I don't, you know, my happiness is usually based on winning, so we'll see what happens. But at the same time, it's been, you know, a good few months since we've been here. There's been some, you know, kind of overhaul in the roster, and, and you know that comes with, with uh, being in the first year. You're, you know, a lot of new guys. You're trying to get to know them. They're trying to get to know you. How has that been, kind of adjusting to taking over this program, to you know, learning the guys, and them learning you? Yeah, and it's twofold. It's not just the transition from a new staff, but also the new NCAA rules where guys are. You know, basically open transferring and and NIL and getting this. So we 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 lost a couple guys that got paid, basically with more money to go somewhere else. And you know that's not typical in the past. In the past, you make a transition, you might lose a guy because they don't like your system or they don't think they fit in. Whatever. Now you may lose a guy simply because he's getting paid more. And so that's I think it's making it harder. Um, but that's the world we live in, and we knew that coming in. Uh, you just it's probably going to take longer uh, to build that kind of culture that you want to have. But I don't have a lot of patience, so we're wanting to build it right now. We're talking with uh, Jacksonville State head coach Rich Rodriguez. And, Coach, you, you've been running the same offense for a number of years. When you get to – a new place like Jacksonville State. Do you have to tweak it? Do you have to change it uh, just depending on the, the personnel? How, how does that work with, with something you've been running for so long? Yeah, you really kind of adjust it to your skill guys, especially your quarterbacks. I mean, the, the last thing you want to do is run stuff that your quarterbacks can't execute. You know, and I always tell everybody, it's not what you call, it's what you can execute. And really what you can execute base is, is based on what your quarterbacks do well. And that's, you know, for all the years we've been doing it, a lot of it's been similar because we've had similar quarterbacks. But there's been a few years where it's been a little different because that guy's skill set uh, tends to lead you to this direction. So we're, we're going to figure that out. The next three weeks we're going to figure out exactly what our quarterbacks do well and then feature that. What is the quarterback situation right now here with the Gamecocks? Yeah, it's wide open. Zion Webb's the only one coming back from the spring, and he has some experience. Uh, he was a little bit banged up. He's healthy now. Then Aaron McLaughlin, who's a, who's a transfer from NC State, a big, strong guy, and has a little bit of experience. And the rest of the guys are freshmen. So it's, uh, I'm not 100% comfortable with that yet, but I think we have the talent there, and uh, we'll be able to do some good things. You, of course, like I mentioned, you've been running the same offense. You're an offensive guy, but defense also a, a big part. Talk about kind of the defense, what your expectations are on them. Again, a lot of new faces, I know. But as you get ready for, for fall camp to start, what's kind of the expectations for your defense? Yeah, Zach Eller, our D coordinator, who um, is really sharp and has got a great plan. we got a really good defensive staff. And and he's a little, we're a little unique as far as we don't have one base. A thing that we do you know we, we we think it's pretty simple but we can do a variety of things and that's one thing that that Zach has been good at and he comes from the Clemson coaching tree that he's able to adjust week to week some of the stuff defensively we want to be aggressive you know we want to take away the easy stuff uh, but our scheme defensively is a little bit unique for sure What's, what's the offseason been like as far as, uh, you know, the, the weight program, kind of getting that uh, implemented into this into this football program? Yeah, I think one of the most important hires and I think one of the best hires I was able to get was Blake McCall, our strength coach, who he and his strength staff had done a great job uh, over the uh, – not just now, but during the spring months. And it was hard for us, uh, JSU, I think, in the last couple years because of playing the fall, spring season during COVID. and So they basically had a spring season and a, a fall season and not much work to really get in the weight room in between. And so that probably led to more injuries last year than, than as a custom. So that was tough on them. They really didn't have an opportunity. Well, now we were able to have a good off season in, in the spring. We were able to have a good summer program. And so our guys feel stronger. They are stronger and a little bit better shape because we were able to do that. 
We're talking with that Jacksonville State head coach Rich Rodriguez and Coach Very. Uh, unfortunate passing of your offensive coordinator Calvin McGee who I know you had worked with for a number of years and, and it's definitely not the way you wanted to bring Rod Smith into the, the program but talk about just kind of uh, him now stepping in a guy who also has has run that offense yeah Calvin's loss was was way more than from a, from a coaching standpoint I mean he's you know he was a member of the family um, um, we are very, very close, his family, my family, and a lot of uh, other coaches who have been together. So, I mean, that took us for – took me for a loop for a couple of weeks. It was – it was just um, – it was a tough situation. But, you know, the, the I was very fortunate that Rod Smith was available um, to, to be able to come down here. And it's ironic because Rod, uh, next to Calvin, has probably been the guy that's been with me the longest. And so being able to get Rod in here, it was really seamless as far as getting his role – uh, moved things around. Mike D'Angelo, who was coaching the quarterbacks, could coach anything on offense. Uh, moved over to the tight ends and receivers, and they would keep Rod where he's used to at quarterbacks, and so it was a good fit. Going into this season, uh, it's the final season in FCS before the jump to Conference USA and FBS. But with that uh, kind of year of transition, you're not able to uh, to to make the playoffs to to contend for an FCS national championship. How do you motivate your players, and and kind of what's going to be the message on that end to them this season? Yeah, that's a good point. It's a very for, fair point, and I'll talk to the team about that. You know, we can't make the playoffs, but we can win the conference. And so I think every year, and no matter what level. We're at and even when we go to conference USA next year our first goal each and every year will be to win the conference and so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll emphasize that uh, we'll also emphasize that every player has opportunity to increase their value whether for one of the four pro leagues or or what have you that show they can play and then some of them are fighting for their scholarships you know to move up to full rides and then obviously the last thing I want our players to feel a great sense of pride for our 14 seniors that we're going to have the best season possible we want to have one of the best teams the school's ever had for those 14 guys you've coached really on on all different levels of college football now as you watch really college football but change you know change in front of all of our eyes where do you see um you know a, a team like Jacksonville State you know a smaller school in a smaller conference where do you see them playing in into you know all the changes going on whether it's conference realignment and I all this stuff going on where do you see uh, a school like JSU in Conference USA at in all of this yeah I think we're very fortunate that we got into 1A and Conference USA when we did because I, I'm, I'm a little nervous about the future of of uh, FCS and 1AA football going forward. Um, also, there's some concerns about the group of fives where we'll be at, but I think there's enough of us and enough of an interest and enough of a value that will be okay because TV uh, TV's making a lot of choices nowadays. And, you know, people love live content and they love live football. And at the group of five level, you get really good live college football that I think there'll be a market for from the TV network standpoint. And so uh, whether they create a 16-team playoff, which I hope they do, or a 12-team, which I hope they do, or we do different TV deals with Conference USA and play on Wednesday nights and Thursday nights, I'm all for it. So I think there's a, there's a market for what level we'll be at. And I, and I think our conference is hard working at it. Well, Coach, uh, we're looking forward to the season. Appreciate you taking some time with us okay. today. Appreciate you. Thank you.